Welcome back to Normies Like Us, a podcast that reminds you it's hip to be square. This week's episode is all about the mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So head into the command center, check in with Zordon and Alpha 5, grab your power coin and get ready to make noises coinciding with your hand gestures because it's Morphin time. It's Morphin time! You will soon pledge your allegiance to me! I train some power! All right. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Hey, yo, normies. It's Mike. Joe. Hey, guys. It's uh, the Colin Ranger. <laughs> Colin couldn't Ranger. think of one fast enough that time. <laughs> well, let's, uh, yeah, you know, what, what's uh, your favorite Power Ranger real quick? If you had to pick one of the original lineup. We're talking Mighty Morphin today, mostly, guys. We're and- talking Mighty Morphin. I'm very excited that we're talking Power Rangers today. Obviously, this is something we grew up on. It was kind of the biggest craze when we were kids. Would you guys agree that it was kind of the toy before there were toys? Yeah, I look at it um, as kind of it's the successor to the Ninja Turtles phenomenon. Yeah. You know, like that's like the 80s, early 90s. Then the mid 90s, this is like the next thing that's like the toy craze. Teenagers with attitude. Yeah, because now yeah. that you're a little bit, you want to hang out with the cool teenagers, you're into the Power no. Rangers. I do want to note also that this is our very first ever listener requested topic um, requested by listener Thomas Meehan. He wrote us a very nice email with some ideas. And um, so we want to thank him for the feedback and ideas. And shout outs to him. Hopefully we do a good job to this subject he's been uh, waiting for us to cover. Well, it's definitely one that we should hit. It is niche to Normie. I mean, everybody knows about it. We just had a movie, the big reboot. Um, so, you know, that's the Normie part of it. But the niche is, what was it all about? What was this weird Japanese adaptation that became a crazy phenomenon again when we were growing up in the crazy 90s? Yeah, I think the niche really gets into the fact that... Uh, You know, we're celebrating Power Rangers 25th anniversary here. So for most normies, I think the Power Rangers were that thing you liked when you were a kid. Uh, The niche stuff is understanding how that thing you liked as a kid is still going. That's true. I mean, that is insane. Not been off the air. No. And we've seen original Power Rangers come back for later seasons and team up with some of these other heroes. Uh, Yeah, It's really crazy. Another part of the niche is the fact that, as uh, we alluded to earlier, it is basically stock footage of a Japanese Sentai series that was then just, they shot all the Beverly Hills 90210 stuff and just intercut it with the action scenes. Yeah, I mean, they Frankenstein this thing together. And this was the 10th season of the Sentai show. So our first season of Power Rangers was in season 10 of an ongoing series made in Japan. So, and they still do that today where they buy the Japanese fight scenes and splice them. So it's this weird 90s thing. Like, let's just take some fight scenes and film some high schoolers and bada bing, bada boom, sell some toys. Um, but we love it. For some reason it works. It has a dope theme song. Oh yeah, and like you're saying, soap opera elements, kung fu, karate, explosions, giant robots, Godzilla fights. I mean, w- what was this? That's true because you have these ninja martial arts sequences, and then these Godzilla Sentai like um, I mean kaiju sequences, right? And maybe oh yeah, guys in rubber outfits. Yeah, no one maybe besides Godzilla like this maybe introduced kids to what kaiju were before they knew it was like a Japanese thing. But the rubber suit monster of the week idea oh yeah oh i just knew that every city had a monorail in it (laughs) because the giant monster would of course have to step over that or step on top of it tiny explosions tiny explosions tiny explosions of course and everything sparks right of course so it was a phenomenon mighty morphin is the one we're most familiar with we're going to be really diving into mighty morphin as far as the tv shows the movies video games and the new comics that are getting a lot of buzz hey before we get into it too much though guys let's just catch up how about a whatcha it's been a minute here so what you watching what you playing what you doing If I can go first a little bit. Absolutely. Coming up, we're recording this on Labor Day weekend. We all just kind of got off on individual vacations. So it's kind of been a minute here. I myself just got back from Salem. And uh, I'll spend my minute on air. Got Joe a little gift. uh, If I can gift himself. Oh, what? This is totally unexpected, audience. We're here in the studio. What? Uh, you've never really brought this up on air yet, but I got you one of your little guys, yes. basically a super dope uh, Marvel action figure. Oh, dog. And I was wondering if you could you know, just sort of explain what you enjoy about these guys, a three and three quarter. Yeah, the uh, the three and three quarter Marvel Universe figures. Uh, I started a collection based off of your, your brother gifting stuff from the factory yeah. uh, and never really stopped. They've gotten a little more difficult to come by now, but you just gave me... 
Hobgoblin. You a don't have that Man many villain. I do you not. You don't have that many Spider-Man villains. Yeah. I know you've got Green Goblin. I saw that guy in a five-dollar bin, and I thought, come on, he's got all the accessories. He looks dope as oh, hell. Oh yeah, man, this is awesome. Well, that's one of the things I like about it too. Is it's it's very like. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's collecting something that's, like, not being manufactured at the moment, so you're really, like, deep diving for stuff. It's a con favorite thing of mine to, like, try to track them down. Thank you so much, man. Oh, of this course. is awesome. That's great. we got to send a photo of that. The yeah. Hobgoblin is easily the second best goblin. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people would make the mistake. I remember watching Spider-Man 3 with buddies in the cinema, and they'd say, oh, I remember, yeah, Harry turns into the Hobgoblin. I'd say, no, 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 no. no, no goblin no, no. 2. Hobgoblin, right. very different. But, you know, that toy's also a little different than sort of what we'll be talking about later. Did they make Power Ranger toys in those size? That's not how I remember them. No, not in that size. They had a handful of different sizes mm. for the Power Rangers, yeah. though. There were, like, the bigger, almost, like, half Barbie-sized. Uh, confession, that is what I was thinking yeah. of. I had the weird Barbie doll size. Some yeah. of the helmets came off. I mean, they were very articulated. And then there were the ones where... Um, and these were my favorite, where they you'd flick a button and the head would pop out. Yep. So it would be like, Ooh, you know, like unmasked versions and then masked versions. Yeah. Um, I had one of those too. It's like a spring mechanism. So yeah, and you would just like the head flip up. it. That's kind of like a turtle's toy like we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, before we get too more into the, the uh, Power Rangers toys, Joe, what you been up to? Um... We were, I was on Catalina Island for a work retreat. The uh, wine mixer. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty nice. Uh, I kept a tally of every time someone said that. Came oh, in at like, like 15 or 16 after. Uh, I was like, okay, pool. that's enough in one day. <laughs> um, that was a lot of fun. Never been there. Um, I brought a book with me, catching up on uh, rereading the Bruce Springsteen memoir, Born to Run. So that was a nice little nice. beach treat. We got treat. some boss news coming up. We know that he signed a deal that his uh, Broadway show is coming to Netflix. So we're going to get Very a little excited, taste of yeah. that. Very excited. Actually going to get to see it. So that'll be fun. That's uh, like right around Christmas time it's coming that's out. Right. So that's a nice little treat. Um, I've been playing Arkham City patiently awaiting you said it's labor day weekend we're recording this next week the spider-man game comes out Ooh, that's uh, a tease list so i am waiting for that and uh, arkham city's kind of been my my holdover you know just diving through the city until i can finally web swing <laughs> that's very excellent i um i've been kind of chilling at home i've beaten doom since the last Ooh, time congratulations yeah man. it's a very good game i'm very much looking forward to doom eternal and i don't know Live pitch, maybe down the road we could do a Doom episode because there oh, is the movie that. with the Rock. Oh, with the Rock, Come back on. before the Rock was the summer blockbuster yeah, star. Back yeah, before Doom was Doom, I would say it's yeah, had so. a great reboot of its series. And yeah. maybe, yeah, maybe doing a leading when when Doom Eternal gets on a, a release date or something, maybe down the road. But I think that was a great game. It's been very fun. Other than that, just kind of uh, relaxing and uh, you know cutting some pods together and bemoaning my fantasy football choices so. uh, yeah. <laughs> in anticipation. As this comes out, football will have started, but right uh, now we're the week before. And so I'm getting, you know, a little cold feet on some of my picks, but we just got to ride it out. Oh, you let me know if you're getting any cold feet I can trade you. Yeah, you, you got can. a solid team, man. Oh, I don't want to hear that. Mike, I'm glad you brought that up, though. Since then, we've gotten our grades. We've had some time to review it. Uh, I've talked to some other people about choices we've made. Just across the board, I do not feel good. <laughs> I am positive I made right. really, really bad choices this year. So I am not looking forward to this year. I mean, I'm always a bridesmaid, never a bride. I'm, I'm doing it this year. I'm going all the way. This is your year. Right. I'm well, feeling good about it. Here's my pro tip for everyone out there playing fantasy. Remember, it's a kicker's league. And speaking of kicking, let's go ahead and kick things off with the TV shows and the movies of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Normies, we are here talking the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, specifically the main series, 93 to 97, produced by Saban Entertainment, or Saban, depending on how you say it. And they seem to pretty much just scoop up rights to Sentai stuff and just recut it and reshoot the uh, the mask-off scenes with American actors. They did Power Rangers, VR Troopers, and I think Beetleborgs. So There's a lot of formats that they did just by recycling this footage, basically, which is a smart way to do a show. Oh, uh, Beetleborgs was a Sentai series as well? Yeah, that yeah. That makes sense. And, and how VR dare Troopers. you just say VR Troopers, too, and just bring back a million memories <laughs> into my life. I, I think I had that Sega game, too. And I wanted the dragon toy, but this is not a VR Troopers cast, but we, maybe we could do one. <laughs> Let me ask you <laughs> yeah, guys. right. Let's get to the main event here. Yeah. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. We have Jason, Tommy, Trini, Zach, um, Billy, and then later... Bad Boy Tommy. And who am I missing? Jason, Tommy, 
Trini, Zach, Kimberly, of course, Kimberly, Kimberly America's Kimberly. sweetheart. Yeah. All right. Sweetheart. Susie so the original five, six Rangers, who's your favorite Ranger? Ah, I hate that we have to talk just about those guys because shout out, I did watch up to probably the um, in space version, but that's not the characters that space I love Oh, wow, that's really far. Well, yeah. I want to say, wasn't there just one called In Space? Oh, there was Power Rangers yeah. in Space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Space, yeah. So space, space, Force. space Force Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. In I mean, Space like, was the last one yeah, I probably yeah. watched up to, but I liked the ninja character Ninjor, who eventually became like their Zordon esque, who was just like a blue ninja robot who was just like a really goofy dude i thought oh, he was cool okay. that's right but, we have like uh, a zordon era yeah. and ninja era oh yeah, yeah 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 and you know they're moving through mentors left and right but if we're talking old school power rangers it's got to be tommy i mean guys it's tommy right yeah i mean it's for everybody it's tommy right yeah well i mean here's the thing like right. it's it started and it was like oh jason's the leader yes, he's, he's very cool he's the red ranger i like jason then they introduced like bad boy karate tommy yeah, i mean come and it was on. like oh and yeah yeah i'll take yeah, him and immediately kimberly's like oh tommy you're much cooler than jason <laughs> <And> <laughs> yeah, as a kid, like, i was like well what am i supposed to learn yeah. from this tommy's the bad boy and he had he's a bad boy he had a yeah. ponytail uh, yeah, new karate the and, best, and the, like the Green Ranger, like everyone else's Zords went together. And yeah. He was like, "Nah, fuck that, man! I got a yeah. dragon. I yeah, I've got the shield. I've got uh, the dagger that's also a flute, which is very important. He makes a flute badass. <laughs> <laughs> the Green Ranger, he plays a flute. He's my favorite, and he still gets the girls. And you know, he still gets the girls. <laughs> I play the flute. Um, I don't think anyone's like, oh, Trini. Trini was my favorite. Yeah. No, I mean, that's how it had to be for you guys, right? It was Tommy. Yeah. I mean, it had to be Tommy. He had the power armor. He also got to become the White Ranger. And he has been oh, like right, yeah. the most enduring Ranger post Mighty Morphin. He's been in the most episodes. He's met the most number of Rangers in canon. And he's a huge focal point for the new Boom comics that have been going wild. If uh, Tommy's off the board, because obviously it's Tommy, I'm going to put my <laughs> vote in for Zach, the Black Ranger. Oh, because of course. He has the coolest weapon because it's an axe and it's a gun. And everybody else just has a single function weapon. Yeah. Like Kimberly has a bow and arrow, the sword, right? But he has range and melee. And I always thought he was really uh, undervalued, like his skill set. I thought he was like one of the coolest because he had a oh, gun and an axe. Utilized. Yeah. But what you really liked about him, Mike was that uh, instead of doing karate, he would just break dance. Yeah, you know, he's got he's got rhythm. <laughs> I mean, we should talk about the, the intro, the yeah. big thing that you have to bring up about the old original. There are some oh, the elephant in the room. Thing. Yes, is the odd color synchronization yeah. of the original cast. If it's uh, pink, it's a girl. Yeah. If it's other things, it's more racially motivated. Um, blue being very nerdy. Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, very strange, very weird. Hayam Saban was an Israeli businessman who just purchased this up. He was making these decisions. Again, he was just seeing these popular things like Saved by the Bell or 90210. He just wanted a teen drama. There's, to him, it made that. sense that it would sync up with teen colors, teen things like that. You know, just a goofy thing of the past. Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't yeah. stay like that. Well, here's a note that I, I, I did doing my research was that uh, the actor who was playing Zach, he auditioned and got the role for the Blue Ranger and suggested, according to this, that he be the Black Ranger. Really? But hmm. the Yellow Ranger being an Asian American is a questionable decision. Uh, I don't know if she had input, and tragically, that actress died in a car crash. So that one's true. In 2001. That's a okay. True. Yeah, rumor. I mean, when you talk Power Rangers, you talk rumors. You guys yeah. knew that rumor. The Yellow Rangers. Yeah, dead. that was one. Like I knew that rumor, and I was like, I think that one's actually true, but I didn't I, feel yeah, comfortable saying know. it. Yeah, and then um, the, everyone said the Red Ranger was a, a gay porn star or something. Yeah. Um, I saw the photo of the dude. His face looks a lot like him, but I, like obviously Austin <laughs> St. John is now just like kind of let himself go a little bit. Austin no offense. I thought he, he's John. like a EMT in like Florida or something like that, right? That's he's a rumor like, I cannot speak to. Uh, Okay. Well, congratulations. Well, speaking of Haim Saban, right? Let's discuss here because we were talking about production and like some questionable decisions. Let's put out some notable bad guys before we talk about how much we love this, right? A lot of actors have quit the show over pay disputes and working too long of hours. And then there is also um, Yost, Dave Yost, who played Billy, quit the show because of homophobic bullying by the cast and crew. So I'm going to put the the bad guys of Power Rangers as the cast and crew in the production for not paying people and just being despicable human beings. Just relentlessly te teasing David Yost. Until uh, he quits the show. Yeah, yeah, which is terrible. And he was the only cast member to have been on every single Mighty Morphin episode and never miss a day. So he was the most dedicated 
and he got so much bullying that he had to quit. So that those are the bad guys. It just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Again, this is something that you want from your past to lift up and cherish and to have good nostalgia about and to watch the new movies and say, oh, it's just so carefree, it's so innocent, it's so pure. But really, of course, like everything, dark past. Yeah. But that being said, somehow what came out of this is a cultural phenomenon, an iconic part of people's childhood. So let's talk about the good stuff, right? What is like your favorite thing? Is it the fighting? Is it the costumes? Just pick your one top of your head. What, yeah, what do you love I the most? Know. I just, I mean, to me, it's just the Christmas memories of opening up the goddamn toys. You know, just the getting toys those bad huge. boys out yeah. and merging them together. I was a Transformers kid. Um, so those, to collect those were just a little more interesting to me because of the sturdiness opposed to the Zords, which to me felt like cheaper plastic because obviously they're bending and transformations were like a lot less interesting. No, they were locking into to be each so. other. Yeah. yeah, of course. But the dudes, you know, the actual figures of the characters, the add-ons, the weapons, the things you would get for that, they were fucking awesome. And they've continued to this day, you know, incredible model kits coming out. Hasbro, who just got the licensing for it, is getting uh, a ton of new figures out there. They just started with a first new figure of the White Ranger, which is, looks incredible at six inches. Looks very cool. That's right. Hasbro just got the rights back. Yeah, yeah the toy the whole um it, it's what is it made of then it's saved by the bell it's transformers it's super <laughs> sentai it's godzilla it's all of this stuff crammed yeah, into one thing so how could you not weird. love it yeah. right and that's what it is it, it really comes down to capturing the feeling of the 90s i think of like baggy clothes ponytails you know like crazy fashion yeah. Break dancing, bright lights, lots of fun, and then you mix that together with like karate and action. Like it's so weird. Yeah, it's it's pretty incredible on that front. Does anybody? I mean, I I watched up through Mighty Morphin, up through the second series of Rangers with Rocky and Aisha. Well, can we talk original movies? Were you guys seeing those in theaters? I mean, I saw Turbo in theaters. Even. I did not see Turbo. Ah, in theaters. There we I, go, I think I pieced out on the Power Rangers after. The Mighty Morphin movie. If I with, wanted uh, cars, I, I would watch Rangers. Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> when also, like, it, Turbo hit the point where, like, the Blue Ranger was just, like, a little boy. Yeah. Who, like, yeah. would, I mean, would transform into a grown yeah, and man. And then he would get bigger. And yeah. it was like, sure, that makes but, sense. But, like, Billy was still around, sure I think. Thing. I think he was just given data at that point. But, and, obviously, so you guys remember seeing the first one in theaters. Yes. You guys remember the celebrate good times like the incredible soundtrack oh, that that film oh, had. do you guys remember yeah. the skydiving sequences I mean oh, it's that's how the movie opens the movie yeah, opens the with you know uh, a series of like extreme sports that's that what the Power Rangers were. they're skydiving yeah which, if that's not extreme enough, Tommy jumps out with a snowboard strapped to his feet yeah. and his sky. I remember thinking, like, oh, people do that. They did like that. That must be a real thing. Like, they wouldn't just make that up. <laughs> it's for like, never seen it since. It's for like charity, too. Like, the, the fucking coolest oh, you, teens and oh, angels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. wearing jumpsuits that correspond to their colors. They, or, everybody that always wore to their colors. Like, you were only allowed to buy but stuff. There were five rad teenagers, or I guess six, <laughs> yeah. doing these things, wearing these colors. Six people saving your city. You wouldn't put that together <laughs> at that point. And they're never around. Around. It's uh, like Clark yeah, Kent, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But these people are the star of our city. We let them do like the main stuff in the charity yeah. dives. It's like Billy They're only wears Rangers. blue. Where Jackson were you? Only wears red. We all must have fainted. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Same time, multiple faints. Yeah, we all. Yeah, we have spontaneous fainting. Um, how you know? I, I like the Ivan Ooze movie. You watch it now, and the Aww. CG does not hold up, though. Who, hey, was he not. anybody? Can, can we say, was he anybody? Because does that hold up? I just remember as a kid loving Ivan Ooze. He's a monster thinking, of the week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, oh he, he starts, and he's like, fuck you, Zed and Rita. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah, and he really yeah, gets into baby. his I'm, I'm the bad man. But talk now. about great villains. I mean, the series had that, too. Rita, what a weird character she was, crawling out of a sewer, like, every yeah. episode on the moon. Uh, Lord Zed was literally just muscles come to life. Yeah. 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 Super spooky. Cool. Look, and they would just like pulsate goldar like, what was this goldar was great i mean everything about it dude. yeah the mighty morphin villains are so great you know and you have rita repulsa with her magic wand make my oh monster my grow oh. you know every episode so quotable zed would like throw down his power i guess there's like in the lore zed had tried to basically mess with the transformer crystal coin matrix like he tried to get that power and it like repels anyone who's not worthy. So he lost all of his skin trying oh, to attain he's ranger like power. Half transformed. He's like anti-transformed. Yeah. Then interesting. And so, that's more the niche stuff with the yeah, power rangers. Exactly. That you don't deep lore dive. Right. Which that like came from somewhere in the comics at some point. Which are all with different companies. We'll talk about that later. Let's. Um. I want to ask then. You know, like, you know, like, is 
Zordon a good leader because he gets these teenagers right and puts them in danger. Bring me all the time. teenagers with attitude. He's got it. Is the robot annoying? And is their command center one of the coolest Alpha. fucking buildings ever? I uh, love the design yeah. of the command center. I think it looks so awesome. That cylinder with the in the mountainside, and they teleport into it. Oh yeah, and oh, again, yeah. we live out in California. That is a spot out here. You can find it yeah, out you here. Go in the find hills. it. Um, Do your cosplay photo shoots before yeah. security kicks you out. <laughs> uh, the command center was incredible. Uh, so with Zordon specifically, we get the first taste of it in that movie. Uh, if you guys recall, in That's the first right. movie, where his like little shell or his little oh, hologram cracks, and there's just like a dude in there lifts up. We get the weird old-timey thing now i was not putting that together as a kid <laughs> you know i don't know if that was ever implied or whatever uh so when that fucking happened i fucking lost my mind that was some real sci-fi shit to me yeah i didn't think there'd be a dude in there no. yeah and just the fact that he goes into the command center yeah. and fucks it up like that was when you're a kid they're like that's hollowed ground oh, like, yeah. yeah and they carry that over with the brian cranston character in the new one with his uh zordon also being sort of a organic flesh captured in a weird pseudo state uh mm-hmm. I, I love that you know it makes him a weird kind of antagonistic bad guy in that he's a creature kept alive bossing over these humans you know i need weird teenagers to do my will yeah i love that shit i think it's great he kind of he kind of reminds me of like tron mcp yeah like he's like true. that face you know but he's so, he's one of the most iconic like just that voice rangers rangers yeah. you know so i think he's great alpha five is a little annoying but he's aye, aye, aye. Aye, isn't aye. he just johnny from short circuit johnny, johnny five, five, five right that kind of and personality and alpha five, oh, alpha five right um so Haim was watching the good stuff at that <laughs> period. He um the annoying stuff. Yeah, the yeah. alpha rain or the alpha toy came with the command center, which oh, was like the thing you needed to get the command. That. You had to get the command center, or you wouldn't have alpha. Wow. Well, let yeah. me throw a hot take because we also have the Krispy Kreme movie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the costumes in the Ivan Ooze movie look better than the costumes in Oh, they look sleek and badass. They have like plastic yeah. and like the Sabretooth Tiger's got the ha- yeah, Aisha's the, the got the headlights lights on that it. Come on. That <laughs> was so cool. Well, you guys got both so excited. Yeah. <laughs> it was the <a> dumbest <laughs> thing. But well, it was like, it's yeah, one of those yeah, things we it talked about so in the Star cool. Trek uh, yeah. episode where you where you see a movie based on something that you watched on TV and, the and then all of a sudden value. it's like why the fuck would she never turn those headlights yeah. on in the show ever? But it was cool to be like wow, there's like a functional loadout to yeah. This, oh, yeah. To this gear, like I mean, why you would you the not? Coolest sequences of their using their weapons and stuff like that. But Mike, you were just saying. Yeah. So the newest film that just came out a couple years ago, Power Rangers. It's a reboot of the series. Yep. Twenty seventeen. Uh, this God, is on Amazon right now. Yeah. Can you believe that? Yeah. Uh, I just rewatched it for this podcast specifically. That's the one I have freshest in my mind, opposed to episodes or the old movies or whatever. Gotcha. What do you guys fucking think about that movie? Oh, that movie's trash, dog. Yeah. I gotta be. Okay. I gotta be honest on this one. I didn't see yeah. it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I watched, you know, the cinema sins and like I've seen enough of it. You know, I've seen the action scene at the end and stuff, you know, so I saw what I wanted to see, which was people in sure. suits. But from what I understand, yes. they really and were you've not seen the actual combination. It's of the just Megazord. so bizarre. Yeah. And from what I understand, cool. what they got the teenagers with attitudes part, right? Yeah, that's what I want to bring up. That is that's what exactly I hear. it. That totally makes sense. If that is the normal one criticism. Look, you got to make some of these kids likable at the end of the day. Kimberly is involved in like a like web shaming, slut shaming, yeah. cyber uh, bullying okay. uh, scandal, and it's like I get it. You're updating them. You're getting them. You know, very modernized, very dark. Boy, you know, Jason like all it opens with Jason like crashing his dad's truck. Yeah, because yeah. okay. he doesn't He's want like to play a little football. jerk. Yeah, exactly, man. Boy, Billy's autistic. Yeah, and oh. his dad died. Yeah. Yeah, I watched. Yeah. It, I watched it one time. It was on Hulu. Honestly, I'm kind of like, on oh, I'm board. that on the background. I'm on board for these origins. Yeah, uh, well, we're know. selling it a lot better than it's. They're played. fleshed out. They're okay. more fleshed out than the characters on the TV show, obviously. But I would argue that the comic books does a more fantastic job of fleshing out those characters in likable ways, building them up as relatable teenagers, opposed to kids who just mm. have all the problems in the world. What if Breakfast Club was forced together? against the world to turn into super-powered badasses. You know, in Iron Man suits. See, I'm, I'm 100% that? in on that if we actually got the fighting. Uh, the, the, there's no fighting in the movie. Right. Until the very end. Yeah. Like, and I get that, like, you know, that's a lot like the hero's journey the is origin the archetype story. for a lot of these. But, like, I don't, I don't think they, like, there's like 45 minutes spent where they're like, oh, we can't morph because we all have to morph together. Yeah. And if one of us can't, then none hands. of us can. And I don't remember that being a part of the 
Like no. I, I thought I remember scenes where, like you know, like Jason and Billy would be sparring, and then putties would show up, and they'd be like, "Oh shit, time to morph." Let's morph. Like the rest of them wouldn't even be there. Yeah, yeah, that was never a thing um, in the show. Except Tommy was losing his power because he had the corrupted Green Ranger power crystal, which was made by Rita. So when that power was draining, but other than that, they could I will say I like Ranger. what they did with Rita being the Green Ranger. And who is this? I'll, I'll um, celebrate all of it. It's uh, Elizabeth Banks. Uh, yeah, she's love. incredible. Uh, what a weird performance as Rita she, you know she was the former Green Ranger they're all aliens Zordon Brian Cranston was the Red Ranger they're in the past uh, now it's brought to the present teens with attitudes same thing get the powers Rita working for Lord Zed who wants a Zeo crystal he goes around finding planets who have these to cultivate life and he uses them for his own twisted purposes blah 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 I'm right. hearing that stuff I'm thinking wow you adapted that so well Goldar is Rita Zord, essentially. Oh my She's god! She's collecting gold. Totally of, fucking makes to sense. Make. Yeah, that I'm not positive makes sense, but okay, <laughs> sure. Again, you're just rolling the dice it's and hoping like that it does. Yanking out well, Dunkin' yourself. Donut stuff. Yeah. Who knows? You know, Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Don't I you apologize. dare! <laughs> not <laughs> Dunkin'. Don't bring that. Not in on here. my cast. <laughs> Dunkin' gave us the um, Dunkachino. So. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Much better time. If you want to have a being that is a conduit for unlimited energy, I guess gold is a good choice because it's a really good conductor. Yeah. So. That totally there is some sense. fake sure. science to that, yeah. you know, at oh, least. I, I buy it. I, you explained it more than the movie does. Just get, right, just give me something. But yeah, I hear the Krispy Kreme stuff is cheesy. And um, uh, weird thing, Brian Cranston also voiced some of the monsters in the original TV he show. He has a huge history with the Power Rangers yeah. franchise. One of his earliest jobs was doing voiceover work for the series a couple different times as different monsters turned giant monsters. Uh, so he was 100% down to get on it. We should talk about the past. Max Landis, a screenwriter, very prominent screenwriter from the Frankenstein films. Um, Chronicle. Chronicle as well. Uh, yeah, his that's largest the one hit, success he's had. <laughs> essentially. Uh, was shopping around for years with the darker take. And it ended up being essentially a lot like a Chronicle ripoff. Uh, a lot of people thought it certainly carried that aesthetic with it as well. Uh, I would have liked to see his take on it. Uh, he agree. pitched things like the uh, Billy also being uh, African American, but being the Pink Ranger and switching with Kimberly at the end of the film. You know, like weird little like twists and side plots like that. Hmm. Uh, I think they directed by Rain Johnson. Oh yeah, would have been much crazier. No, um, <laughs> I think they saw it as an opportunity to get their own superhero franchise, and instead of making it as weird as possible, let's streamline it to an Iron Man origin story, and that's the flaw of that. Film. Yeah, like people are walking into this either with nostalgia goggles, like we know what we want to see, or it's like a kid who doesn't know what to expect. So just give them more action on either side of that. Sure, but the thing for like kids, like when they just want to see, like we wanted to see a movie with like exactly. Dino Force or whatever the latest version of the Power Rangers because it's still on the air. Yeah, and there's like Samurai and uh, Ninja Storm or yeah, something so like, like that. So like if it's for the kids, why wouldn't it just be a movie of one of those? And if it's for us, then, then why, why give us better? the origins? Why <laughs> yeah. give us a fucking origin story? Yeah. I will say this though, guys, if I can drop a hot scoop, a okay. little exclusive spoiler on you guys. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about how the second film, it is picking up steam. It seems like they are going to move forward. I can go ahead and say that those uh, reports are exaggerated in how little they think it is. This movie is moving forward fast. Uh, toy sales were incredible for this film. They really? are very excited to do Power Rangers too. Well, yeah, because at the end of the day, you are not only making back your ROI on the film, but also the merchandising. Exactly. Um, especially now that Hasbro has secured the exclusive rights and Saban has the rights to the franchise again as of 2016, which is right before we get to 2017 film. So... Once they got it back from Disney, which we should mention, this was in the hands of a couple different companies. Uh, it was Disney most recently before Saban got it back and Hasbro kind of helped buy out the rights of everything. So we're in the new era, the return of Saban and Hasbro. Yeah, it's a very exciting time if you are a Power Rangers fan. Like we said, this is the big anniversary and there's a lot of cool stuff on the horizon. How many series can you name? Because there's been so many beyond my oh, There's Orphan. like 9 million. Impossible. I would love to get you guys run down if you can do that. But real quick, did you have a Power Rangers themed birthday party ever? Oh, absolutely. I really? Did, I did, supposedly. Oh, I, really? I, you like, just don't remember? No, because I, I, talked, I talked to my mom. I remember very vividly going to a kid's birthday party where you had one of the Power Rangers there. Um, oh, no fucking way. Yeah, and oh like I remember like God. looking at all those Power Rangers and being like, damn, this kid's got all the Power oh Rangers stuff. Oh, my God, that's awesome. Um, and my mom was like, you had a Power Ranger at one of your birthdays. I was like, I don't, I don't think that's true. She was like, yeah, the Red Ranger. I, I brought the no Red Ranger here Friday. fucking uh, I have not seen a photo. I don't recall it, but apparently I did. Wow. 
Wow. Okay. I had um, a birthday. I don't know what age, but it was at Discovery Zone, which oh my God. was a short-lived franchise in, I guess, Ohio or maybe the you know tri-state area. But it was basically like Chuck E. Cheese with more obstacle courses. Leaps and bounds. Yeah. So it was huh. a lot of like, like if you imagine a ball pit times 5,000, right? A ball pit with bungee cords. Anyway, so it was like that. And we had the Power Rangers birthday. I had the cake and I got the White Ranger Saba sword you know the sword oh, that talks okay. to the white ranger that's right yeah it had like a face on the end and you would they had a couple movie. quotes yeah. yeah yeah and that has some important roles in the comic as well but yeah so i got the saber sword and i remember my cousin pulled it up and said i'll cut the cake and i thought it was the funniest joke oh ever because like that's a sword that's funny yeah. dude that's hilarious yeah. okay so you guys had much better i was just talking power rangers paper plates so okay you guys <laughs> well i had those too much better <laughs> i, I could have uh, <laughs> I remember the PSAs, too, because I, I took karate. Many kids took yeah. karate after yeah. seeing the Power Rangers, you know. And, um, you know, they'd have those PSAs where the kids would go to school to fight, and then the Power Rangers would jump in and be like, hey. Hold on. Don't do that. They'd pop the helmets off. Yeah. It would be like the one time Tell you would me. ever get to see, like, wow, these, that's actually them in the outfit. Yeah, these two kids now know the identity because yeah. <laughs> they're... Tommy, Jason. That's right. They're going to go rat to all their homies and they're covered <laughs> in blown. Um, I also, knew it was them. He's, guys, he's always wearing red jumpsuits. Yeah, and he, yep. he teaches me karate. Yeah. He literally does this. <laughs> he is, yeah, Jason is literally my karate yeah. teacher. <laughs> um, also, um, Balk and Skull are like great. Yeah, <laughs> we haven't talked about yeah, Balk and Skull. Yeah, yeah we really need it. It would be a disservice not do, to mention those guys. Do you guys remember being a kid and seeing like the way the Power Rangers act and think that's what you would be like when you were a teenager. (laughs) (laughs) A grown man. I had such a like misunderstanding of what being a teen was because I watched the Power Rangers. I was like, well, they all have jobs and they they do extreme sports and save the world. Like, sure. I guess that's what high school is. You're also reading (laughs) Spider-Man. Reinforced. (laughs) Yeah. And Spider-Man's just a Sentai character. Let's be fair. Oh, of course. He's got the similar looking suit. And the robot. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and the popular Japanese TV show, Supaida Man. Supaida Man, exactly. Um, Catch the Spider Man episode for that one coming soon, boys and girls. <laughs> just a tease. Um, no, I remember feeling just with like the characters of Bulk and Skull and how the kids would act in Angel Grove when they would go to like Ernie's to get like smoothies, which they were always doing, yeah, they or to love just smoothies. practice their martial arts. I just remember sort of the same feeling that I would get watching Saved by the Bell, where I would kind of feel like annoyed by everybody, <laughs> but still really like it. Right. I would be like, what, like, what are you guys doing? Like, just pay attention. Just like, do don't other you cool school? things. Like, yeah. It is so weird, though, just the way they put it together. Like, we have to have this weird teen drama. Then we'll go to Griffith Park and shoot some bullshit action scenes. And then cut in the Japanese show at the end. We're done. Yeah, but also Trini's working on getting her driver's license. And you'd be like, oh, okay. I yeah. guess that's a thing yeah. you have to do. And then after you fight, she looks like she's yeah. 35 and, and she Rita doesn't know how to drive a car. Would be up there watching and listening and be like, oh, we're going to send a car to beat her up this time. And <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Learner's <laughs> permit, <laughs> bro. Yeah. Exactly. Like, what does this mean? Why is she just punking these kids? <laughs> do you remember the episode where. Ernie gets a pachinko machine. Oh my god! And like no one knows what the fuck pachinko is, <laughs> no. but obviously in Japan, pachinko is this huge phenomenon, pseudo gambling thing, right? If you don't know, and so a pachinko machine is like a vertical pinball machine, right? And they get one, and no one knows what it is. He's like, I got it from Japan or something. Wow! And because in the Japanese show they have a monster that's a giant pachinko machine, so they needed to somehow yeah, no insert. Yeah, like, that's together. how we get it. We, we can't great. use this footage unless Ernie brings it into the smoothie <laughs> shop. And it's like uh, what's that Woody Allen movie where he just used an old movie and rewrote. Oh, the script, what's, new what yeah, I mean, like, what's new Tiger Lily? Yeah, it's what's new Tiger Lily. Yeah, it's Kung Pao Enter the Pao. Fist, exactly. <laughs> Which are yeah. great. I give the writers, the story writers, a lot of credit for how the fuck they put all Figured this together. It yeah. yeah, it was like writing reality TV before reality TV. I would love it. Again, you know, we talked about it a bit when I was mentioned with Godzilla. To invent something like this where you're just like, I don't know, what if I just did voiceover on like something that I don't understand um, and then just mix it all together? I'll buy this Japanese show it's and I'll incredible. film like five scenes. New show. Um, also, the, the music. Let's be real, right? The music's great. We should say, <laughs> listeners, <laughs> we have an episode on right now that we're all cut up on. It's all on Netflix. Uh, and just watching this intro, I can hear the song even though it's muted. Like yeah. every scene, it's incredible. I guess that song was written for the X Men show. No way. And they passed over it. No uh, way. So you it could sounds have, so much like the theme now that you say that. You could have <laughs> one of the two. The, Probably the two greatest guitar riff and theme songs in history. Yeah, totally. 
Yeah, yeah they're Uncanny very similar. X-Men yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Uncanny X-Men Rangers. Uncanny X-Men Rangers. See that crossover. Um, um, and the Turtles also, crossover is great. You guys remember that one? That's right. They have that episode, the Turtles yeah. crossover. They did uh, the Balkan Skull music I want to mention is really great too. Oh. Yeah. I hate that you I'm just gonna said that. I'm going to put that drop in before the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. Just keep listening. It'll show Balkan up. Skull, uh, let me tell you, the ending of most Balkan Skull scenes was like one of them accidentally sat on a hamburger. <laughs> and I just feel like, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> So yeah. Every one of them. Well, I remember, like, like who are those fucking bum? Like they were yeah, Jay and Silent Bob before yeah, Jay and Silent Bob. Look at Jason, and we're watching this episode. He's just destroying a punching bag. Everyone's trying to have smoothies. I'm sure that's yeah. Very in loud. the middle of the juice Guys, bar, it's a juice bar and a gym. What is this place? Like, I don't let's know. Just go get juice. Angel Grove, California. It's a very confusing. Yeah, place. Angel Grove. Great, great name. It They're looks. Cool. It looks They're very hippies. much like Tokyo though. Back. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, especially. only when it's small. It's weird. Yeah, when it's small, it looks like California. But when it's when it's full scale buildings yeah only when the film stock changes <laughs> oh and you do see the film stock change yeah they, they probably shot video on this oh man it's so fun i i mean i wanted to be a power ranger you know yes. and you always think like cosplay like it's so good to get a power ranger suit because no one can see you so if you're yeah. like shy just throw the helmet on and you're rocking and rolling but um i never had a helmet or anything like that i think it would be nice to have one in a case Maybe uh, oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. In the trunk of your car, just in case you need to turn into a mic. <laughs> you know, you got. You never know when you're going to have to um, hit girl somebody. Well, coolest. you guys want to go rob a bank dressed as Power Rangers? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty like great. The Point Break remake. Yeah, that's our new Point Break. Thomas, don't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, coolest item that you could get from them? Would you want one of the weapons? Would you want one of the wristwatch communicators, which I thought were super badass, or would you want the morpher? A morpher. That's yeah. true. I want a morpher. I want a morpher. <laughs> like an actual, you want a power uh, coin and a you morph. morph. This is called the morpher. Yeah. You put the coin in it and you hold it up and you go <laughs> power of a. Master. <laughs> no, I want to. Yeah, like, I, I was trying to think like, you know, at the if point it, they're at now. If you like, guys were all listing off the uh, dinosaurs that you got, and I looked at mine, it was a mastodon, a woolly okay. mammoth. Oh. I'd be like, I'm not even saying this out loud. I'm going to say raptor when they come around to me. <laughs> Big elephant. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> what is it when they're cars though? Like, he's like power of a semi truck, Ford GT. <laughs> yeah, I think their thing was like a wristwatch with a yeah. keyhole, and they would yeah. turn the key. Yeah, yeah. they uh, would start the ignition, and they would say it's turbo time. Yeah. They're morphing uh, like are you sure that's not from jingle all the way <laughs> is, that, is that not turbo man's catchphrase oh that's another crossover it's boom's hopefully gonna do. um I, I think if i had a morpher you know and like lose the token you put a quarter in there you just uh, turn into george washington <laughs> i get so mad why did i use that why did i use that token uh, i'll get an axe and i would just be very strong against cherry trees <laughs> yeah. um let's do a quick tops and bottoms and let's do it like so uh, favorite and I feel like everyone's going to say the dragon zord, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the dragon zord, man. <laughs> so obviously it's the dragon zord. Green Ranger zord. played a flute List. and had his own zord. He's right. the best. List off any question you're about to ask. And say, the say, answer is Tommy. The answer is Tommy stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who had the coolest outfit? Tommy. Yeah. Uh, Dude, Joe, the fact that you can do that is incredible. Oh, right? yeah, dog. There's so much good music to use in this episode. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to add breaks. There is no shortage. Going from the football episode where it's like, what do I what do, I do for yeah. this? Yeah. To, to Power Rangers where there's everything is a musical cue well luckily there was like you know football's on every channel fox cbc nbc so i was able to get most of those themes and also hank williams you know so you guys listened to that last time um yeah every question pretty much lands with tommy being the best um my favorite is obviously the mighty morphin era i think zach is super rad because he has an axe and he has a gun the mastodon kind of sucks though um, Kimberly's cool because the, the Pteranodon's the only flying Zord, so that's yeah. like a cool skill to have. Yeah, and it was like cool. a sleek yeah. one, too. Yeah. I love how she was just the chest plate. And, yeah. And then yeah. a little... <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Another weird decision that maybe is coincidental. Yeah. Um, the Zords, too. You know, are you guys familiar with the Japanese toy line Zoids? Oh, yeah, 100%. Zoids are mm-hmm. animal robots like Animorphic transformers robots. yeah so it's like you'll yeah. have a tiger robot and a dinosaur robot and so like they're called zoids but wait these are called minute. zords yeah. right wait a minute so this whole show even probably in its you know japanese origin was just buying because those were popular in the late 80s oh, early 100%. 90s in Tanaka, japan Tommy? it's like yeah, i am went Tommy, to exactly japan once and was like fuck i'm gonna take this whole country and make it a show how much you want for these yeah 
I don't know if he has an accent. That was probably bad of me to do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got some money. Give me your Power Rangers show, your Sentai. And actually, I misspoke. It was the 16th season of Super Sentai when we got our wow. first season. Oh, wow. So that had been running. I mean, and if you're familiar with Kamen Rider, that's the Masked Rider series from Japan. They're, like, there's a whole genre of these people if you in were spandex a suits. Plant though, and came over here, and it just started. It's the you same show. Wait, what are you talking wait a about? Yeah, Power uh, Rangers. We've been had around this for forever. 16 yeah, years. Especially if you're, you're like 35 years old, you yeah. get you just got transferred here for business and power. Rangers boom hits. You know, <laughs> Season like, one. God damn it. And they did um, air it in America, the Super Sentai versions yeah. in California and San, Fran- like San Francisco and LA and like for on the Japanese language channels, but didn't ever get distributed. Only the Power Rangers show. Yeah. I love it. It's so nostalgic. I mean, I still want a Green Ranger helmet in a case on my desk. Please. You know? Please. I would take it in a minute. Um, a talking sword would be nice too. Let me ask you guys this. Moving forward with the movies, what would you guys want to see in the sequel? So this grim dark one just happened. Uh, you know, in my mind, I almost kind of want something more like a like like a crank to ask you. You know that crazy fight scene that oh, he yeah, has yeah. where they come to life. You know, just play more into the goofiness that was the old show. Call it Go Go Power Rangers. I would like it to be called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh, there you go. Absolutely. Because um, this one was called Saban's. Power Rangers, Power Rangers yes. right? Saban's yeah. Power Rangers. Right. Well, a good thing he put his name back out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. I would like Mighty Morphin, Go Go, like something like that. And I don't know. I want the suits to be not like. They I just want to be fun. Yeah. 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 Like they. I, that was my criticism about 2017 stuff that I saw. Is it all just looks like this Transformers? Can't tell what the heck it is. Like when we saw the Megazord form in the car, in the show. Sorry. You know. You knew the pterodactyl is the chess piece, and the yeah, it was color coordinated. It was, and it was all very like simple, it. and it wasn't like this weird techno organic it was very angular and easy like i miss that kind of design and yeah. then the suits too were like too like biotech i don't know there's a quote their in weapons, the new like, movie come out of their where they say oh yeah where they say uh well i'm controlling the feet no i'm controlling the feet well no i'm in the this oh we're all working together it's not broken down into the way it is now even that's the how way Voltron it's spaced was. out yeah exactly yeah everybody's just in weird little pods saying, oh, okay, we're working together, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, what is this specific rim so drift dumb. with yeah. five people yeah. now? Oh, no. Exactly, that's exactly yeah, right. As opposed to the show where it's just like, oh, everyone took an elevator up to the head and that's where we all are. Yeah, and we'd yeah. be... And we're doing cool poses. Exactly. <laughs> we're the Ginyu Force. I want more, I want more cool poses and more karate You can't press the button poses. until you do the pose, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Voltron obviously is another big influence of this because oh, yeah. the Voltron had, you know, five lions forming one lion and... You know, very similar to the Megazord. So there's, a, you know, a lot of things melded together to create what we know as the Mighty Morphin Power Ultraman. Rangers. Ultraman. Ultraman. Yeah, that's the Sentai stuff. Exactly. So it somehow it's like sometimes you get home late at night. You just look in your fridge. You have a bag of chips. <laughs> you know, whatever else is in there, you throw it in there. <laughs> and sometimes you make a tasty treat. And I think that's yeah. what happened here. They just took a whole bunch of ingredients, a little bit of teen drama, a little bit of action, a little bit of anime. And bring it all together and you get the weird Power Rangers mythos. Yeah. Which has spawned and blown up to... Let's do the run now here at the end of the TV movie section, right? We have Power Rangers, Power Rangers in Space, Zeo, Turbo... Turbo, Zeo, Galaxy, Space Force, Time Force. Dino Thunder, Dino, Wild Dino Force. Thunder, Wild Power Force. Slash Rangers, which was, of course, the uh, small Ari oh, Shankor yeah. uh, pitch film. Oh, I would love to see that. Uh, Mike, you have to check this that out. Readers cool. will tweet out this link uh, as well. Uh, uh, it's super cool. It stars uh, James Vanderbeek, of course, from Dawson's Creek fame, as the Rocky, the the second Red Ranger who's investigating killings of Power Rangers. Uh, it's so cool. Uh, which it, we're seeing now kind of brought uh, into the comic book yeah, universe. Tease that cool. a little bit. Yeah, no, and speaking of that, that grim dark, I think that's kind of what we would all want then, right? If we were of the nostalgia age, give us that like grittier look at the Power Rangers. I, like, I either wanted super campy or super yeah, dark. Yeah, look, no uh, in between. This is why I like the Ari Shankor, and I actually think he gets it right, is that it's goofy, but the sci-fi elements look incredible. Yeah. That's all I need. And it's like the real suits. It's yeah. not, you know, totally yeah. changed. Guys, it's okay to build suits. I know it costs a little bit more money, but just do it. Just build the props. Don't lean on the CG so much. I know you're creating a lot of jobs. No, and stop letting the actors pop them up the faceplate so they can show off their faces. Look, yeah, I don't know yeah. who any of those fucking you're kids are. You're a Power are. Ranger. Look, social media exists at this point. These kids are going to tweet. They're going to be on Conan telling me to watch Power Rangers. I'm going to know who they are. Yeah. Okay, So just let them be in the characters in the movie, too. Or you could just go ahead and do, you know, the Ninja Turtles thing. And just there's a stuntman in there who's yeah, way better at fighting. Thing. And you could just... 
cast the most likable person in that role and then do the stunt man wear the helmet whatever yeah. but um yeah i i think that it has to be a degree of camp because it is such a weird subject matter um and i don't know we'll see what happens in the sequel i i need to watch the 2017 one admittedly and you have to check it out mike yeah i'm sure it's it's very important but yeah <laughs> it's, it's top of your list I'm yeah sure. yeah it's it's critical viewing um but because of that you know what ari what's his name I always forget. Ari Shankar. Ari uh, Shankar. Who is most known now as being producer of the Castlevania Netflix series, which season two is coming back this October, guys. Very excited for so that. He's just good he's at taking nostalgia really cool stuff. stuff. That's right. That's totally his bit. I don't know if you've seen some of the uh, stuff that he's put together in the past, but literally he calls it like cardboard nostalgia or something like that, where it's just like the coolest things revamped. That's awesome. That's I would love to see him and the Max Landis work on a draft together. Yeah, there you go. Um, speaking of taking cardboard nostalgia and making it cool let's go ahead and talk about the comics because i think i'm most excited to talk I'm about this next and there is some this, very um cool sort of grimdark stuff that they're doing now with the original mighty Morphin crew so let's go ahead and teleport onto the comics beep 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 beep, beep. Hey, yo, Power Normies, we are talking the Power Rangers comics. There has been a lot of them, but we're mostly going to be talking about the new um, issues coming out from Boom that have been getting a lot of critical acclaim. But I do want to ask you guys, have you read any of these before, not just the Boom ones? And then after that, I want to just briefly run down because they've been with a ton of different companies. So this is kind of the first time where I can feel comfortable and say from recommendations from my brother that this is comics that I have read of newer properties that unlike sort of the more recent episodes where we've kind of had to dig a little to find the comics, I have not Jurassic really caught Park, up on those. Dark yeah, Souls, that kind of that, stuff. That I was just finding in the moment. Yep. These, I've been reading these for about a year now. I love these Power Ranger comics. I think they're super cool. Boom Studios, of course, we know as kind of one of the smaller studios. They do a lot of like Adventure Time, Adult Swim, things like that. Uh, I love them. I think they're great. Yeah, I uh, Boom Studios just as a whole, I really appreciate because they do a lot of properties like this that are really nostalgia filled, and then they they modernize them in a way that's fun for I think young readers and old fans. Yes, them and Oni Press, but Boom certainly has more fun. I think they're definitely to the cooler comic books. Yeah, and getting ready for this episode, you know, I knew I'd played the games when I was a kid, watched the show, loved the show, didn't know anything about the comics, but I started looking into these um, Boom issues ever since they were reacquired by Saban, the rights and everything. Um, and I just thought I was blown away. It's like the Rangers I remember, cool timelines of like parallel dimensions, parallel worlds, and it's it's really awesome. Um, and like you like said, modernized and updated. Way more into the, like the sci-fi aspects too. Like you get a little bit of that in the TV show and the movies, but these really dive in and you see a lot more. Yeah, it was so much Monster of the Week, but like you're saying, this, they've got just the ability to say... What a perfectly established world we have. Let's move forward with the canon. Uh, I don't know if something like Kingdom Hearts is feeding into this or they're feeding each other necessarily, but I love seeing something where it's like the people in the armors, but it's become something where they're like space cops or guards. You know, it doesn't even matter that you're a Power Ranger because there's so many. It's so abstract what it even means yeah, to be a power, a power Ranger. Ranger. Yeah, exactly. That's so cool. Right. And just... I fell in love with these, and I am not the comic reader, but I just dove in so deep on these Power Rangers they comics. They look cool. Do you like the coloring, the artwork? The coloring, the art is awesome. They really pop. Yeah, and I love the the story arc, which we'll get into a little bit later, where the, what they're doing with the Green Ranger and stuff, because he's everybody's favorites. We got to say Jason David Frank still doing MMA. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, we got to be saying that. And he's still uh, showing up on the show, too. Yeah, so. uh, he has his brand, uh, Jesus Didn't Tap. Mm -hmm. He's got a tattoo. I mean, and hey, he's living his truth, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. Yeah, and, uh, power to him. In his and you know there were a lot of rumors hey. for years that he might play Bloodshot in the Bloodshot movie that yeah, of course has what? now gone to Vin Diesel oh but, Vin Diesel uh, yeah and he has okay. done uh, you know he's done those um, those versus videos on YouTube with the Green Ranger fighting Batman or oh, something yeah. like that mm -hmm. yeah, he's doing it he all. loves the role he and I mean like it, he's yeah. yeah I mean that, that role really defined him in terms of like a performer like a lot of these people looking at the old cast um, like Billy Kimberly, uh, Zach, they they had bit roles on a bunch of different shows. Everyone did the run on Law and Order. Everyone did their run on Suits and every other USA show. Um, 
Green Ranger. He was like, no, man, I'm the Green Ranger. Yeah, <laughs> I'll White be Ranger. The ghost. White Ranger slash Red know, Ranger later on. He, he's yeah, like, he's, uh, he's like a Black Ranger in another yeah. series. Yeah. But um, him being the most popular, it makes sense that the new storyline is so focused on what happens. Because in the TV show, it's that green with evil arc where the green ranger gets turned to the good guy's side right that's like a lot of people's favorite arc i know that's what i love like well can i just say real quick mike i know you said in the last segment you have not seen the latest power it's saban's power rangers i'm rolling right. my eyes every time i say that saban's yeah uh but we should say the post cred scene for that film is everyone in detention again and the teacher is saying uh we're missing one student tommy oliver Tommy Oliver? Tommy, are you here? Oh, no. And the cast has come out and said they would like to see that character played by a girl, but they've also come out and said Green with Evil is the episode they just want to see adapted for the next film. Yeah, I mean, that's what everyone loves, and that's what's so cool about these boom comics is it's like pushing that. Like, what if... What if Tommy didn't turn good in one of these universes and he turned evil and then was trying to destroy all Power Rangers? That's so cool for my child brain and my adult brain. And yeah. I love these boom comics. I highly recommend them. And I am not the comic guy. Well, I just want to talk to you about the the teaser that they put out to promote this. Oh this my uh, God. What, what is it called? Shattered, Shattered Grid. Yeah, Shattered, Shattered Grid, Grid starring the character Lord Draken. And yeah. it's. David Franklin. And good. you yeah. see, yeah, the, this this teaser video that they put out, I think for Comic-Con, uh, it might have been a little bit before that they actually released it. Um, it's a live action, five minute short of of the Green Ranger or Lord Dakin. Lord Dragon, Lord Dragon, Lord Dragon who we should say is in an alternate timeline uh, in the Green with Evil episode. Uh, he, Tommy is given a choice to take Jason's hand. Come with me. Join the Power Rangers. No, what he does instead is he goes on the run. So, of course, he ends up getting corrupted by Rita, Mm -hmm. believing that he can become a super powerful force to one day rule the world. He merges together the green and white coins and becomes Lord Draken. That's right. So, boom, in this video you're talking about, Joe, we see Jason David Franks walk out in that outfit. It's insane. And And he's got, like, first officers and stuff that are other Power Rangers, a fleet of Zords. Oh, he has has a team that he leads called the Psycho Rangers, who he has just gone through time and career. Corrupted evil other rangers with different Zeo coins and crystals. I mean, it's fucking awesome, guys. Yeah, I'm going to pitch this. This should have been in the previous segment. Give us a gritty Netflix show with that. Oh. <laughs> with this, the boom. Guys, Give me boom the boom presents. universe. With you, and you guys Power are even saying, you know, blah, blah, blah. I would take an animated version of this. It does not have to be That's live true. action. If it's a motion comic, just, you know, just do something. If you guys something. don't know anything with what Netflix's DreamWorks studio is doing with the, uh, uh, oh, what's it called? You just mentioned it. Uh, Voltron, the Voltron yeah, yeah, yeah. cartoon. Yeah. They've Those made it good. very adult, very cool. Uh, I would love to see something like that with Power Rangers. That's the avenue it could go down. That's true. If we don't get this in the 27 reboot universe, because they're just going to go back to the green with boo. evil and younger kids, that's boo for us, maybe good for toy sales. Give us that Netflix show, even if it's animated, because this boom run is just phenomenal. And if you like the Power Rangers and have not read any of them or don't like comics, just check these out. You're doing yourself a huge Check disservice. it out. This is the biggest arc to check it out. Like we said, they're doing it for the 25th anniversary, this Death of the Grid. But it's, you know, it's been going for three years now. There are 30 issues. There are three annuals deep. I mean, it's a fantastic yeah. piece of and work. And the, the original series that, that Boom launched, what they started, it was a continuity with the original team just before Tommy even showed up. Right. So that's kind of Ooh. filling in the gaps of, Literally, your nostalgia, the OG shows before we even got to the Green Ranger stuff. Yeah, and that's what's so awesome. But it's come, it's taken a long time for the comics to kind of get in this spot because before that, there's been about five or six studios that just had short runs, didn't really do much. Yeah, 12 we, to 13 issue arcs. Yeah, we quick have stuff. quickly Hamilton doing a Mighty Morphin series, 13 issues. Marvel did two series, and one was a VR Troopers crossover. Um, 96 Image had one book that didn't even wrap up. Acclaim Comics, which I've never heard of, did Turbo and a Beetleborgs crossover. Tokyo Pop oh did a bunch God. of photo okay, comics. Well, I'm going to find that. <laughs> and finally, before this, Paper Cuts had seven issues, three Mighty Morphin, two Samurai Rangers, two Megaforce. Uh, so it's just seven books. So there hasn't been there much. there any manga. Well, like he was saying, on the Tokyo Sentai, yeah, for on the sure. Yeah, but what Tokyo Pop did was yeah. just they took the TV shows, screen grabbed it, and then just put speech bubbles. That they did like a photo too. comic for, for that series. Yeah. But then 2016, Boom acquires it, and that's when all of this that we've been louding has started, 2016 onward. 
the weakness of the brand of Power Rangers, and we can get that with literally just everything that you just said, Mike, and kind of what we were talking about before is it just bounced around TV studios, is that... That's true, Disney, Fox. Saban just sees it as a moneymaker. Exactly. That's what it is. It's just a property to them, and 100%, that is what it is. You cannot fault them for that. It's something that they created to make money. Yep. But you would like to see them do a little bit more of the honoring with the Boom Studios, they have nestled into that so well just to have people, real great creators, sit down and say, no, 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 no. You know, let me carve out a real world that people can just grasp onto. And it's expansive. I mean, it's, 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 uh, I wouldn't say overwhelming. Like, I don't, th- I don't think it's too no, hard to No, not get at all. Into. It's very contained. Like we just said, 30 issues. And beyond that, it's only got one spinoff series. Super cool. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Pink. You know, what that a character awesome. to follow. Kimberly Jones. And Amy Jo Johnson is probably my first, you know, childhood crush. <laughs> I swear to God, you know. Yeah, I mean, let's get into it, She's, right? she's America's sweetheart. <laughs> oh, you were just watching an episode where she got turned into like an evil punk. A leather jacket and the yeah, eyeliner I'm, and the I'm, teased hair. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's my dream girl. That's her good look. Yeah. <laughs> is, is punk Kimberly from that one episode. <laughs> yeah, so it's cool that they're giving the Pink Ranger her own series, though. Oh, like, and it is. It's really good. I, um, and like There was even talks of, at one point, um, we, the Red Ranger was going to be a girl in some of these newer series, and they didn't pull the trigger on it. But that idea of, you know, it's, it's, an, it's a thing that comes up now in media is we're trying to, you know, empowerment of female characters and everything. I think it's awesome that the first one to get a dedicated book isn't the Green Ranger, yes. isn't the Red Ranger, it's the Pink Ranger. I think no, that's they're awesome. they're honoring what they have. They don't need to create something new. Let's just build up what we have. Yeah. And Kimberly's such a great character, you know, in these comic universes. We're seeing these expanses of their backstories. Kimberly was a Olympic hopeful who, of yep. course, you know, gymnast. screwed it up, you know, as a gymnast. Uh, a lot like that movie Stick It, if any of you guys perved on that as young teenagers. Never watched Stick It. Perved on that. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. No? No? Okay. Well, no. <laughs> Hashtag Cassie was like, oh, let's, on that. let's watch this movie. Yeah, okay, <laughs> there was well, like a movie of my yeah, child. There's a reason Colin watched it. Yeah. But it was not for that. <laughs> the plot. Yep. But um, I don't know. I think that's really rad that we get those spinoffs and... I, I want to read more of these boom books, guys. The future is very bright for Power Ranger comics, which is exciting. I mean, like, uh, there's obviously the never-ending show. If you're still into that, that's great. There's yeah. a lot to check out. But, yeah. you know, Thomas, if you haven't read the uh, the boom comics, they might be right up your alley. Please, buddy. Is this um, Thomas? Is he Tommy, the Green Ranger? He, he might be. He might be making <laughs> He's like, us hey, do talk, this for Talk a about my favorite stuff. Please. Yeah, hey. <laughs> well, we appreciate you listening. That's not just Tommy. It goes to everybody. And if you're listening, that means you have ears. And if you clicked on the link, you probably have eyes that can read. And if you can read, read the damn books because they're great. Yeah. You know, they've got beautiful covers, got uh, beautiful cover work, great bindings and collections. They're up to, I believe, five trade paperbacks now. I mean, that's great. Oh, wow. I didn't realize they were that deep. I thought they were only like three. Crazy. Yeah, not so. We don't want to spoil too much, but if you want to see dark timeline, evil Tommy try to take over the world, it's awesome, and it's so smart to jump in at the point that people remember the most, like where people most connected to emotionally. Let's take that and go crazy. And this is brilliant. Just kicking off right now. Yeah, we're not not, we're not pitching you something that you got to like deep dive back on to try to catch up. This is right now, folks. It has never been better to be a Power Rangers fan in the world of comic books than right now. Is that safe to say? Would you guys agree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like it used to be like, oh, uh, kids like Power Rangers. All right, well, we'll write 12 books and just fucking let it go. Here's five issues, whatever. You know, rights were cheap because I'm sure Saban wasn't that protective of them either. Like, oh, I'll give you anything. You want my senpai? You got it. Yeah, yeah. You got my senpai sentai. Senpai sentai. Sentai senpai. Sentai sounds too much like hentai. I don't like it. Yeah, there's a lot of Notice me senpai. Sentai senpai (laughs) hentai. It's a new genre that we just created. That's uh, that's my, my super rap name. Oh, Super Sentai Hentai. There super, you go. Super Sentai Hentai. All right. Well, that's uh, hopefully you can do the soundtrack for the next Power Rangers game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's the comics, guys. Do you have any final thoughts on this besides recommendations? We just have round the table agreement recommendations. That's this correct? Yeah. Well, and I'm just floored that Mike's getting into a comic book. I mean, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, very cool. You know. It took a lot, but I am way, way into the Shattered Grid. And watch, we'll put the YouTube link to that trailer uh, in the notes as well. Absolutely, we'll throw it out there. Yeah, meanwhile, we're going to get the controls of the Zords going here, and we're going to hop in on the video game for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and we're going to kick it off right now. Power 
Homeward Zord! What's up, normies? We're here to talk about the games of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. There's been a lot of them. I mean, like with any huge phenomenon, Ninja Turtles included, we just saw a boom of games to come out to follow up with this. But were they any good? Couldn't really tell you. I only played one of them, the Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. I'll be honest with you guys. You, you literally both just broke my heart. I'm sitting here on my computer trying to bring up a video for you both. But as we were just about to hit record, you said, no, nah, really, all I remember is the Nintendo game that was you know pretty close to the first series and the first movie. No way. You guys don't remember... Power Rangers Zeo Battle Race? No <laughs> I don't way. remember Power Rangers Zeo. <laughs> I don't remember Power Rangers Zeo either. Okay, what so is check it Zio? out. This was a Mario Kart clone. I don't think I got up to Zeo in the viewing order, you but know this was a game though. I had. I remember the helmet. They were just shown a Super Nintendo controller, yeah, though. this was on Super Nintendo. Okay, wow. so Zeo era. Yeah, 100%. I th- yeah, so oh, my this gosh. This was literally the Mario Kart levels. I mean, there he's going around on, what, uh, Mushroom Highway right now? Yep, I mean, yep. that's exactly what it is. Right, and that seems to be what I understood in my research. Is a lot of these Power Ranger games are just clones of other games yeah. and not done very well. No, exactly. No, right? I, I mean, mean it was just clones quick of Final Fight, up, Street yeah. Fighter, things like that. You know, it yep. became versus games. Um, uh, I'll say I have my first memory of somebody tying uh, a kid's shoelaces together while he was playing one of the. Uh, uh, Sega fighting games, you know, like in a movie, a kid like would Balkan do that. Like Balkan Skull would yeah, do. Exactly, like yeah. Balkan Skull would do. Uh, it wasn't and you, as was he it? lost, no, it was not. I did not get bullied. Uh, and as he got up, he <laughs> that was a little <laughs> too direct. <laughs> no one bullies me. Yeah. Yeah. Fell. Not Colin. Uh, you know, I, I got a lot of great memories associated with these stupid video games. Um, uh, the Game Gear version of the first movie video game That's right, yeah. was a huge staple of mine for road trips. You know, to pass mm. time to go around fighting Ivan Ooze. Uh, and this was a stupid video game where opposed to, if you guys remember in the old Super Nintendo first video game, you could morph and change. You know, you would change from the teens to the outfits. And that one's like a side scroll beat em up. Yes, which Colin, we awesome. played that side scroll beat em up on we a Raspberry on Pi a couple yeah. years ago. Uh, in the Game Gear version, you could not differentiate. So you would choose to either be Billy or or the Blue Ranger. You know, things like that. It fucking sucked that for that sucks. reason. You know, you were Ivan Ooze Large or the Hornet or Ivan Ooze and the Hornet mixed, if you guys remember the yeah. finale to that that first movie. I His mean, Zorian. it just fucking Maybe. sucked, dudes. That's a bummer. And you yeah. said you played that on road trips? Yeah, you, all the time. You guys on my had, Game Gear. You guys had quite the battery budget. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. So <laughs> Game I, Gear was like, what, eight AA batteries? <laughs> I think uh, it ate eight D batteries. Yeah, right. um, God, that You thing. had to wear a backpack with yeah, that. So I had the <laughs> uh, booster pack, pack bar thing that would yeah. literally was the length of the Game Gear. It literally doubled it in size, and then you oh, would so like plug it into long. a thing. And my dad would say, no, 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 we are not keeping this plugged in for the entire <laughs> drive. And I'd say, okay, that makes sense. But it's portable. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love bashing about the Game Gear. Maybe we should yeah. do a bad Sega Tech episode. Yeah. Or yeah. We should just do a whole episode on Game on Sega. Gear. Yeah, and with Mortal Kombat, we're talking a lot no, of Sega. No, we love Sega, though. We do uh, love no, Sega. No, we love it. We love it. But these were early games. These were games that I went to to rent a lot. Did you guys own these games, or was this a blockbuster game? For this you was, you know, Neighborhood Kid had it. Oh, there you go. You know? Yeah, it was neither owned nor rented just played through friends but meanwhile something like turtles in time was a must own of course and you know what i mean so in contrast to we, we said it in the intro that this is kind of the follow-up of that phenomenon but the execution on the game side is a lot more lacking they did have some of those elements where you can pick any character and if you die then you lose access to that character but you can play the through the other ones yeah which so have, eventually you get to the end as like trini yeah yeah, yeah. and then you're like Ugh. and there's <laughs> famous stuff with these games too like the palettes so like they only made one set of sprites for when you were in the ranger suit so if you were trini or kimberly and you transformed you're just the dude sprite oh, yeah they're incredibly you know? bulky i remember they're them. just yellow or you know pink or whatever so they're cutting corners there. You have, like we said, Street Fighter clones and the Sega CD. Uh, I was looking this up in research was basically they would play an episode sort of like Tokyo Pop did where they just put speech bubbles over screenshots and they would just have button commands during a fight scene. Yeah, I want to say telltale I had that before as well. telltale. <laughs> but nothing would happen if you got it wrong. It would just keep playing. Uh, you would just uh, lose some points because they uh, they only had the God. footage that was already filmed. They didn't have like a B scenario. It wasn't a you choose your own adventure. Yeah, you, they call you an idiot. It was a, it was a it was a choose your own adventure with one path, and if you got it wrong, they just said, "Well, we're still going this way." Nah. So Sega City is probably the very worst one um, ever. I'm a little worried this might be a uh, you know Colin Pizza Power moment. Oh, God. But was there a game where? 
you would fight as Zords against other. Oh, you mean this game I'm bringing up right now called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers: The Fighting Edition? Yes. Oh so, yeah. So I do remember this. Did game. you play this in arcades, or again, this is something you maybe had? This was a blockbuster. Could have been I think SNES, this might have been yeah. a one-time blockbuster. So the thing I like about this, and I don't recommend, it's got large sprites. The graphics look great. On what this I liked one. about this is the yeah, backgrounds look fantastic. I liked going to the moon and knowing that you were walking around as a giant robot doing badass kaiju battles. But I don't remember any of these characters. No, I, just, I don't remember any. Of well, these that's that's the Thunder Megazord. That's, that's the from, Ninja Zord. I remember him. Yeah, yeah. So so basically, we're looking at a Street Fighter clone with large sprites, yep. very well animated. I mean, and you're he playing just Hadouken. As, you're yeah. saying a Street Fighter clone? He literally just shot a Hadouken. Out of yeah. Hadouken. <laughs> you know, so two D fighter. The the graphics look pretty good so Mikey this one actually the is Thunder worth checking Megazord. out yeah that's it, said it on the bottom well no but that's oh. that's the one <laughs> but the thunder megazord is the one that rocky makes when he has yeah. that red dragon zord when they switch all the zords with zed that's oh, okay the, that's see the i second. don't remember any of that so games like this i only wanted to be megazords fighting other megazords i did not want to be any of rita's monsters i, wanted, see, I the, wanted to be a megazord only fighting other monsters i didn't want to fight other megazords or even maybe a goldar you yeah know, if you were like a side yeah. character, goldar was weird because like goldar was like i'm a little man and then I grow, then grow into a and big man. And then he would get cut in half and explode. And, but it's but fine. But he would be small and he'd be like, oh, I can't believe they just beat me. I'd be like, I just watched you die. Yeah, old man. <laughs> you just, Angel Grove is covered in your blood. Yeah, yeah. What was the spark budget on Power Rangers? So many sparks. Um, <laughs> I knows? think Goldar is super underrated too. But yeah, if you, you can Underrated. Be, <laughs> I guess I, oh, I misspoke. I think this he's, I like Goldar. Come into the podcast and shoot us. It's when the three white guys and nerds well, are debating. I think Goldar is underrated. <laughs> <laughs> Society has hit a new low. Uh-oh. I don't. I think he's a cool design. Is all like you could have a yeah. really nice like like. He's a Griffin oh, monster, man. Like a four hundred dollar statue of him could be something that would. Is be he a splurge. monkey? Yeah, he's like Goldar, Gold Monkey. I was or a flying monkey, I imagine. You I said guess. Goldar, like that made sense that you said monkey <laughs> yeah, afterwards. I apologize. Oh, yeah. oh, Dar like I monkey. I really locked eyes with you. Yeah. And, <laughs> I went to, and the face you made was like, well, no. Yeah. Just, right. You can't just say Gold it confidently. Monkey. That doesn't make it true. I think with the Power Rangers games, get this back on track. I think <laughs> a system sort of like. Um, uh, what's that? Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm dying right now. Talking about like Alter a- Beast. Oh, okay. You get three. What? You get power ups, and if you get two power ups, then you transform into your animal form. So having floating power ups where you're a human and you get two or three of them, now you can morph every level like that. Would That's be smart. the standard game, Mike. You're thinking in the past. I'm talking like a Macross or like a Battle Pod or you know something. Oh, go to Dave and Buster's. Zor- get me in one of the Zords. Uh, you know, four of my buddies. Exactly. Surround me with screens. We're in the VR world. Get me a game where I'm doing karate. Chop, 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 chop. I'm picking up a morpher. I'm a Power Ranger. Okay, now... Morph, 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 morph. Morph, 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 morph. Okay, now I'm in the Zord. Zord, 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 Zord. (laughs) Right. I mean, I I could see the five battle pods because they have this in Japan. I would lose it, man. That sounds so cool. Yeah, they have these mech games where you'll have a team of four to six guys all piloting their own mech in these big VR pods. And they will like have scheduled times, and they'll play the other oh, people the across future. the city because oh it's all God. Wi-Fi, and they'll be playing these other teams. Like, imagine that if you're all in one Zord. Like, I, that that's pretty. Sick. All right, cool, yeah, man. yeah, I'm sold on that. That's yeah. what I want. Make then. it, Mike. Dave and Buster's, <laughs> right? come on, <laughs> <laughs> invest a couple million. Make we, this. We'll go to the Hollywood the location. The, the power pods. Pizza power pods. <laughs> pizza, <laughs> pizza power pods. I love it. Du, 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 yeah. Du, du. These video games, though, didn't. I just didn't play them much. Uh, I only played the Super Nintendo one. You got to be the Megazord at the very end. I couldn't do it without like save states on an emulator. You know, because was never good. Power yeah, I'll be honest. I don't remember getting to the end of any Super Nintendo game ever. So. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. Not Turtles in Time. But it's sad That's to true. think that the Turtles have done fairly well they don't get an a plus rating or anything but they get a solid maybe b minus in their video game adaptations the nes and super nintendo era get a's but like throughout the rest of the history i think power rangers have been a consistent c c minus sure i'll even go to this as a brand this is something you guys are saying you didn't have many of these games i did this is something Mm. i would call aunt safe like this is something your aunt could give you that makes sense if it was a video game oh this says the power rangers on it oh this underwear says the power rangers on it oh Oh, this shirt says the power rangers Rangers on it he loves the power rangers easy Hashtag at us. Let us know if you guys had something else like that. What was a brand that was like ant safe to you guys? Yeah. Hashtag or ant safe. Hashtag ant safe. <laughs> Let us know. That's true. Or if one of these games is like a classic to you, or you yeah. want to argue for it because we just haven't had that much experience. So maybe we'll check them out. Hashtag uh, classic Power Rangers game. No, was a good one for that <laughs> get, one. Get a little crazy with the hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hashtag Normie Rangers play game. Oh, there you go. But... 
Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been impressed by any of these. Uh, fighting. Here's my thought. You're not impressed by that Mario Kart clone that I just I, showed I remember, you. <laughs> I know, you know. Here's you bothered why, to YouTube that trailer. I've done it. <laughs> I've done it. You see, the show itself is just taking something that pre-exists and slapping other elements into it. That's what the games were. We take Street Fighter and we'll slap something into that. Right, take Mario Kart. We'll slap Power Rangers into it. So it's, give me a mobile game. It's I mean, always been the taking things too. Give me something like that. Hey, I, is there no movie game? Is there no? There was a movie tie-in game. I'm not sure though. Like how for the played. new one? Yeah, I believe oh. so. Um, they did, you know, the crossover with DC in the comics. We forgot to mention there was like a Justice League Power Rangers thing um, that I uh, allegedly exists. Yeah, I'm getting looks around the table <laughs> like I'm a crazy person. But in my research, <laughs> I they I said Justice League and Power Rangers. I like what DC is doing in the games with um, Injustice. You have the Ninja Turtles. It would be great to get the Power Rangers in there. You also have Mortal Kombat characters. Right, right. Which, you know, we're going to be speaking about Mortal Kombat next week. So this is all kind of going here. I think it would be awesome to get the Power Rangers in a fighting game that's made by a good company, though. Not like a yeah. standalone, but put those characters into Injustice. Why not? A portal zips them into the Justice League universe and they're fighting Ninja Turtles and... Oh, I'd say we're pretty close to that. You don't get the Zords, but you get, you know, each character with a unique well, weapon. for a finisher move. A finishing move, right. So they would also be a good ad for Smash Brothers. All right. Why don't we uh, get a couple million dollars invested and make a game <laughs> called Nostalgia Bash? Yes. And okay. it's a fighting game like Super Smash Brothers, but you got the Power Rangers, the Ninja Turtles, the Beetleborgs. Everything you loved as a kid. I we'll think this the is the only troopers. time people have ever mentioned Beetleborgs. <laughs> as much as we years, have. Yeah. I think I've thought more about the Beetleborgs now <laughs> than I did as a kid ever. Well, they lived in a haunted house. That, that, that's what blows I my mind. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I do. So please write in if you want yeah. a Beetleborg. <laughs> Come on, Thomas. Just Beetleborg. <laughs> just give it to us. Um, let's go ahead then and let's hit final thoughts. I think we, we kind of spoke what we can about the games. And, uh, you know, we love the Rangers. You love the Rangers. Let's get on back to command center and wrap these things up. Go, go, normies. Wrap up, Rangers. Hey, yo, normies. We are here forming the Megazord to close this thing out in one fell swoop to leave sparks across the battlefield. We want to hit our final thoughts on Power Rangers here. Well, just because you said it, uh, what part of the robot would you want to be? I would not want to be like the feet or something. I would want to be like a hand or an arm, I guess. Oh, okay. I wouldn't want to be an arm or a hand, I guess. I mean, I'd really, you want to be the brain? Yeah, I'd either, I'd either want my own, like okay. Tommy, or yeah. I guess like Jason, be like the body yeah. slash head just in the middle, in the yeah. safest impact zone. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want. To, I would. I'd want to be Kimberly the least, I guess. Or it's like, and I'm the chest. Kimberly like, in the newest one, when she starts syncing up with the Megazord, says, "I'll lift us." And just like gets them back on their feet. And I just thought, like, is that like all you do? <laughs> That's the whole point. Right. I'm here for when we get knocked down. Yeah. I'm the morale I get us back officer. Up yeah. <laughs> You're never going to keep the ranges down. I would want to be the butt. <laughs> just the butt. Yeah. Just, and Mike's the butt. And Mike's sort of is turned around. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm not a good fighter. Just let me be like, because yeah. when, when the robot falls down, my robot will just clamp on back there. Oh, it's an octopus, too. It's not even a dinosaur. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> and we'll have a jet booster. Octobutt. <laughs> it just like swoops into place. Octobutt. Morphin time. <laughs> Let's do that. Hey, so um, Mike Zord won't stop presenting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just watching us from the ocean. Well, Get into the fight. One of the smartest of <laughs> all animals, mind you. You can't kill it. Yeah, it's too smart for that. All right, final thoughts on Power Rangers. I love Power Rangers. Power Rangers is silly. Uh, it's fun to talk about. It's fun to watch even as an adult. There have been several times where I've thrown one on in the background at home by myself. It's something I can imagine very early on just leaving on for kids in the future you know if, if, oh, if that ever happens because oh the show's still gonna be on in the yeah. future oh yeah. I am positive oh, but it'll definitely too. be something I'll show my kids yeah, to be like, yeah. This, is, this is what because it's fun we liked when we were young yeah. you're gonna have to bust it holds out an up and how it screen. looks yeah. because it's like that Sesame Street you know where it's just it's feeding into a part of your brain where you're just like god this makes me so happy yeah it's just nothing but bright colors explosions mm -hmm. it's easy to identify like everyone wears the right colors you know and that, you know, was a uh, Saban thing, too. He's like, if everyone just wears the same civilian outfit all the time, the kids will remember who they are. <laughs> yeah, it works. Hey, they're color color. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, that's he fine. He had it figured out in how simplistic it needs to be and needs to be presented. And we almost see that now, like, in other places, too, where, like, they can signify, 
Maybe he got that from the turtles too, like that color signifier thing. Um, my final thoughts are Power Rangers are super dope. Um, it's probably never going to die as long as it's still profitable on the toy sales, which it seems like it is. I don't want it to die either. I'm excited for Boom, and I hope that if this storyline does well, that they will kind of look at that when they adjust maybe the tone and what they deliver or give us that Netflix show. I would freaking love oh that. Oh, my God. I think that's such yeah, a good idea, really cool. guys. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's my final thoughts on it. Joe? Um, yeah. You know, we had talked a little bit in the beginning about all the hate that David Yost had to go through yeah. on the production. Obviously, that's terrible. Um, but I do think it's worth noting on an uplifting note that, you know, he did help form and was a huge member of the No Hate movement. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, there are, I think, a lot of young boys who saw Billy and, like, the, the Blue Power Ranger and, and, like, maybe that that's a little beacon of hope for them. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a part of our childhood. Like, it's definitely something I've always thought about, loved. Colin, like you said, throwing it on, like, when you just get home from a party, throw it on in the background. It just makes you laugh. Yeah, well, when we popped up my Netflix account here to have stuff on in the background, I had watched the two-part Green Ranger episode. So I think it's kind yeah. of one of those things that's it's never going to die for me. It's always going to be a, a part of my, my childhood, just like Turtles. Yeah, and I think at its best, you know, maybe it's overly simplistic, but what you take away from it as a kid, the messages that they try to teach you with these Beverly Hills things are, we have to be there to support each other, support our friends, and work together. Because there's episodes where Tommy is like, Oh, I don't know if I can be a good guy. Like, Rita, I still feel that pull. Like, what do I do? You know, to the dark side. Oh, we got your back, man. We know you're good. And like, he has self-doubt, but his friends help him get through it. That's what you get. So if maybe the production crew did some bad guy stuff. Yeah, it's so weird that the message of the show is camaraderie so much that to, for that to be going on in the background, you just hate to hear With that. one of your lead actors. Like, yeah. How would that shit fly on any set ever, right? Un Unbelievable. But that's the beacon of hope. And that's what yeah. the Power Rangers gave us is, you know, we're French through the power of friendship and acceptance. You can do anything. We can be cool teens with attitude. With attitude, baby. <laughs> we got to have the attitude. Cool baggy outfits. Yeah. Keep mighty morphers in our back pockets. Do karate. Secret watches. Help out. Yeah. It's so cool because yeah, you're in school, but no one knows you're Power Ranger. Like, who didn't want that? <laughs> yeah. You got a cool watch. Oh, I got to go. I'll tell you. Yeah, I, I gotta... thought that's what high school was. I thought we would all go to high school and we would all get superpowers and like full-time jobs. Like yeah, Jason yeah. teaches that karate so full much. time. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to look 24. Yeah. yeah, you know, instantly. <laughs> I was like eight years old watching, like, oh, I guess I'm going to be a grown man in ten years. <laughs> right, right. Well, any tops and bottoms or anything like that? Hot takes on the Rangers before we get out of here. Um, even like tops and bottoms spinoff or related shows because yeah. you guys are digging on the Beetleborgs. Come on, man. <laughs> Beetleborgs. Yeah, you know, I I liked it. Like I said, all the way to the ninja stuff. Uh, if you guys even recall, the plot of the first movie was yep. that transition period. It was them the going stuff, from mighty that was to weird. the ninja stuff. Exactly. Uh, you know, I always thought that was cool. As it goes on, they become more like with like light speed force and animal force. Those things Wild become force. like more about cops and stuff like that spd and start yeah, they become working like space with like the government and i think there's a lot more like insight and regulation i liked this back more when it was a little more superheroes superheroes hidden identities helping alien sci-fi so uh, i hate to see it kind of go in that direction obviously again who cares it's gonna go through a million different iterations it's gonna keep changing gonna keep being different i'm excited to see what it's gonna be in the future yep and you're still gonna get those action scenes and monster of the week stuff so you know, I think just the genre itself was so huge. You get Beetleborgs, you get VR Troopers. There's probably a bunch of other ones that I don't even remember. Um, but those are the main oh, yeah. three. There's probably a hundred of them. Yeah. yeah. And even the weird animated stuff, like we said, Voltron. Yep. I think it, for me, like, yeah, when they're like police officers, it's not as good. Like, I like the dinosaur robots or a dragon. Like, the second iteration was like a dragon and a griffin and a unicorn. Like, it was mystic mythical yes. beast. So that was still like, but when it's just like a car... <laughs> it, it loses that like you know what i mean because that's we're talking jurassic park era too yeah right right power rangers is peaking when jurassic park comes out dinosaurs have never been bigger oh yeah so you have dinosaurs karate like we said it's everything and so when yeah. you don't have the dinosaurs it makes it a little more boring to me but i love it and i don't know go go power rangers go go guys go go power rangers and you know be sure to look for us on social media, Normies Like Us, Instagram and Twitter, www.normieslikeus.com for all the podcasts. We would like to hear your feedback. Thank you again, Thomas, for suggesting this episode. And um, also, 
We are going to be doing a special Halloween theme month. We're going to try to have one episode during each week of October about something spooky. So stay tuned for that. Meanwhile, next week, we are going to be coming up with Mortal Kombat to keep on the uh, 95 timeline. (laughs) (laughs) And great theme song. (laughs) We've been Uh, with X-Men, the NFL. Yeah, we've been killing it. Um, Now Power Rangers and then Mortal Kombat. There are just so many good songs. Say what you want if you don't like football, but there are some good football songs. (laughs) So keep writing into us, guys. We like checking out stuff we maybe don't remember as well or know as well. Uh, Keep giving us suggestions. Give us a shout out. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Yeah, and if you get a chance, please uh, leave a review on iTunes. That would help us out. A really huge helps. Amount. Definitely, definitely. So this has been Mike, Joe, Mighty Morphin, Colin. That's right. Dang, he got to be Mighty Morphin. Oh, we're, just, <laughs> we're Vulcan. <laughs> skull. I know. What are you guys? <laughs> I got Vulcan skull. <laughs> That's it. Thanks, Thanks guys. <laughs>